G'day there, you're watching Andy's Fishing Wild Cook. I'm gonna take you on an overnight adventure in this beautiful place. We're gonna catch our own food and cook up a delicious meal. The reason I chose this place is one, it's isolated and there's no one gonna be here, but two, it's also blowing really strongly and I, I managed to get over here. It was quite rough as you'll see, uh, but this is one of my favorite places in the world to come. It's just a, a beautiful, amazing place. We've got some crab pots. We'll dump those in the water first. Uh, then we'll try and catch some fish for lunch or dinner. I wanted to check out a cave over here that we couldn't do last trip because of the tides. And I reckon this time we'll, we'll make it happen. Let's hope we get some crabs this time. I'm a little bit limited because I'm, I can only go in this one water hole. I just seen a mud crab, he's sitting there on the sand. So it's not ideal spot, but I'm gonna put the pot right in front of him and see if he goes in it. We'll come back in about half an hour and see if we catch him. He's literally 10 meters away from the pot. Let's see what lure we're gonna use. These are the ones I got from Daiwa. Let's see, I quite like that color. I might try the pink as well later on, but let's let's go with the a little bit more naturally looking with a bit of purple on it. And I'm rigging it up on a 5 weedless hook with a about a quarter ounce sinker on there. We'll start here and fish up to where we put that last pot in with the crab. I'm almost certain we'll catch that mud crab. He looked like he was decent size, but until we get him, we don't know. I'm probably gonna be a little bit un undergunned here because I'm using 15 pound braid, 20 pound leader. This is the um, hyper rod that I was using last episode. Some of you might remember it. Let's see if we can get right in there, skip a few casts into some nasty country and pull out, let's see, I'm, I'm hoping for mangrove jacks. I'm almost guaranteed a couple of cods in here. Um, but it is blowing 20 knots today and tomorrow. So this is, yeah, a really nice place to fish when it's a bit nasty outside. Oh, got him, yes! Oh, oh, that was a nice mangrove jack. Oh, the wind kind of caught that cast and he came from the left. Well, he won't be back, but let's hope for another one. See if we can get it in there. Yeah, it's very hard with this wind. The line keeps pushing, pushing over to the side and then getting caught up. Oh, we got a looker, we got a looker. Come on, eat it. Oh, it's mucking around that line too much. We'll definitely get another fish in here. That one, I don't know what that one was, oh, but he definitely looked out. Here we go, we're in the zone. You're gonna smash it on the drop. Nope. Oh, he comes, 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 comes. Oh, to Trevally. That's not the one I saw just a second ago. I'm gonna see if I can skip one right at the back there. Close. Over a couple of branches, but we'll fish it. There we go, now we're in the zone. I think I need a bit more lead to make that paddle tail work. Oh, oh, that was something, just whacked it. Oh, look the way. Oh, what have we got? I think it's a trevally. Oh, don't know yet. Fighting hard enough for a trevally and it's kind of silver. Yep, there we go. First fish. Oh, I don't know what I was looking at, but I definitely looked away there. I'm going to let this guy go because I like these things to grow to at least 100 pounds for a little giant trevally. Hey. I'll let you go, buddy. It's um, literally first fish of the day. It's, I've only been fishing for less than 20 minutes. And um, yeah, I'm hoping for something something a bit better. Not that these aren't too bad, but they, they do grow to 100 pounds. Hey, off you go, buddy. That's the one. Skipped it right in there. Let it sink down a bit. And then twitchy, twitchy. Yes, oh, that was a barramundi. There's all sorts of things in there. Trevally, Jacks, Barras. Haven't seen a cod yet, but I'm sure I will. Let's see if we can get something else out of here. I don't want to catch the Barra. I definitely do not want the Barra. He's undersized as well as being out of season, but I want the Mangrove Jacks.
Yep. Oh, that's a barrel. No, get out of there. I don't want to take the hook out of you. No, 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 no. Just want to release you, buddy. Ooh. <laughs> Looks like he didn't even get it in the mouth. How's that? He got it under the chin. You silly fish. Okay, so yeah, under, well, he could be legal size, but it's out of barra season anyway. So that's cool. Hey, okay, let you go, buddy. Um, oh. okay. There you go. I doubt I'll catch another barra in that same spot, but I reckon there is still cods or mangrove jacks in here. Yep. Oh, did me. Did me. Oh, I knew that would happen. <laughs> oh, I'll keep going with this for a little bit, but if um, I get if I get done again, I'll have to go to a heavier outfit. I'm using the same setup as before, weedless hook ball sinker, but this time a jerk shad in pink and white. I do like pink and white in slightly that tannin stained water there we go let's see if we can skip one under here somewhere oh right up against the bank that's perfect you're gonna get nailed come on oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> i think that was a brim it could have been a cod but i think it was a brim and i think these soft plastics the um jerk shads are softer than the paddle tail Oh, it got me in. Come on out, come on out. Oh, it's a cod. It's gonna be oh, black spot cod. Oh. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna persist with this light rod because it, it is nice to use a light rod. And I've, I've only been smoked once, so, but yeah. He is probably, let's get a look at him. He is probably mm, four or five centimeters undersized. So, oh, and there's a crab he's vomited up. Ew, there you go. <sighs> These cod do eat a lot of crabs. There's the legs, and oh, they stink. Yuck. Check out the coloration on this cod. I've never seen them where you can see the individual scales. That's, yeah, quite different. He's got a big fat belly on him, so he's, yeah, he's doing really well. Hey, okay, let you go, buddy. All right, we need one about that much bigger. Nice skip cast right in the root section there. Not not the string section, the root section. <laughs> oh, and got a hit. Perfect, nice skip cast. Should be something in there, yes! Oh, he's small. What have we got? Little estuary cod, orange spot. There we go. We're getting a nice selection of fish today. Hey, okay, let you go, little buddy. Ow! Cut me. There we go. Hey, nice little orange spot. Roar. And yep, they always cut you. That's the gill rakers. I think it's almost time to go and check that crab pot. Got him. Oh, what have we got? I think it's another cod. Yep, another orange spot cod. There we go, nice little cod. We definitely need something a bit bigger. There we go. Hey, off you go, little buddy. Yep. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Feels codish. And it's a little cod. Off you go. Oh, look at the colours on that. He's really, really defined. Hey, I need bigger. They're, yeah, 38 centimetres they need to be. When I'm out here, I'm always looking at the weather and keeping an eye on the clouds and the wind and everything. And it looks like we might get a bit of a storm tonight. It's, um, it's actually forecast to rain a little bit, but that's why I've, yeah, built one of my other things that I'm going to show you later on. Okay, let's go check this cave out. Won't take too long. Check out how white pristine this sand is. 
Now, the cave I think is there, well, what I'm hoping is a cave is there, but we've also got a nice big escarpment here. We might have to have a look at that as well. Oh, and there's a nice big rock up there, wow. I'm going barefoot because, well, it's just nice to walk on this sand barefoot. Hopefully, the terrain's not too bad where we're going. I used to run around with no shoes on as a kid all the time, but as I get older, I you know, whack on shoes all the time. Um, yeah, there's a nice couple of uh, big rocks over there as well. I don't think we'll get over there. That looks like a bit of a hike. This here is probably another 500 meters. And there's some mangroves here to contend with. Let's see what happens. I'm not sure I chose the right way to go. I'm gonna backtrack a little bit. Um, and try and find another way. Looking pretty dense through here. Ooh, that looks nasty. This is turning out to be a bit of a mission. I just went up this gully and I think it's going the wrong way. So now I'm backtracking a second time. Yeah, I don't know. I'm starting to have my doubts if anyone would have used the cave, if there is a cave there, just because of how hard it is to get there. So wish I had brought my shoes. Whoops, going down. This is not easy. And I'm making it a lot longer than it needs to be. But yeah, we need to go way over that way. There's a couple of modifications I've done on my boat which make it a much, much better um, long trip um, vessel. So I'll show you that as soon as we, well one of those, as soon as we get out of here. I've been wanting one of, or both of these modifications for yeah years and years okay i've reached the base of the big rock oh that was something a lizard i think so yeah my guess is down here but now that i'm here i can see the mangroves budding right up against here so i'm not all that like, hopeful that we're going to find an actual cave this is definitely the spot i saw you can see the pandanus up there there's a little cave here let's have a look it's just big enough for Two people to hide in, but not anything that anyone would have lived in or visited. Here I am inside the cave. It is, yeah, very small. See one side there, the other side over there. Definitely no one would have used this, plus the tide comes right up to my feet here. Oh, interesting though. I'm going to keep going along this way a little bit and see what else I can find. It's quite eerie in here. It's um, yeah, very quiet with the odd pop, crackle, um, yeah, and it's really hot and humid. I think I might have been wrong back there. That was only a, a tiny little outcrop with a, a mini cave. This here looks much more like the rock that we're looking for. We are definitely getting closer. This is a, one of the faces, I think. It must be further that way still. Oh, this is hot and steep. Get across here before my feet burn off. That took me well over an hour. I'm really hot and thirsty now. I didn't take shoes or drink but instead of going about two kilometers around the way i came i'm just gonna try and do a beeline through the mangroves and find my boat hopefully check out this weird orange i'm gonna say it's a fungus wow i've never seen anything like that before it's cool oh. goes all the way up this tree oh. and there i go on the ground Oh, I need to get out of here. I thought this clearing here is the start of easy access. Oh, easy. Ow! Oh, I just stood on that. Oh. 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 Take a little break, I said. It'll be fun, I said. Oh, it'll be just like a little walk in the park. No. Oh, here we are. We're just about out of the bad stuff. Oh. And I'm stuck one more time. Let go. Oh. Let's not do this again today. Oh. Here I am where I was before. 
oh, oh, not much of a shortcut. Let's hope the boat's still there. I'll tell you what, this pub looks rather inviting. Hmm. You gotta come check this out. There's hundreds and hundreds of fish in here. My own little fish spa. That's pretty cool having all those fish swimming around in what is pretty much a bathtub. The um, the water's not really cool at all. It's it's kind of lukewarm. So yeah, I'm not really cooling down. I think I'll head back to the boat and I'll show you the first of my modifications, which will be perfect right now. Check out this poor little bugger. He must have jumped out of the water and yeah, didn't make it back in. Oh, poor little guy. Hey. I don't know if you noticed my footprint there, but I'm pretty sure I might have almost stood on him on the way in. And I may or may not be wearing any clothes. <laughs> I haven't filmed soldier crabs for a while. Here we go. Quick, let's chase them. soldier crows were hurt in the filming of that sequence and if I'm not careful I will stand on more <laughs> right where I left it always a good thing check this out in this hatch here I've got a fresh water hose and bump <laughs> hopefully that doesn't make too much noise on the camera but I've been wanting a, a little freshwater squirt down shower for, I don't know, ever since I've had boats. I can even give my reels a little squirt down because they got quite wet on the way over. So that stops the salt from building up on them. I'll see if I can show you how I rigged this up. We've got a water bladder here, 40 litres. Then we've got a switch just here, which I'll turn off. And the pump is over here, it's tucked away in there. So I've got a little bit of extra fresh water for, for niceties. And I can wash my gear down a little bit if I'm out for more days. So that's the plan. I'm going to try and do three days in the future. Um, today, the, the next two days is going to be just two days because otherwise it'll, get, it'll be like Tuesday next week before I upload. So... Yeah, but I'm really happy with that little shower. Let's check the crab pots and maybe move them. The tides actually started pushing in here. Now this is the first pot. The crab was literally just over there. Let's see if he found his way in. <laughs> if I was a betting man, I'd say 20 bucks that there's a crab in there. And no, wow. I wonder if he got in and got out. Huh. Okay, pot number two. I don't feel so confident now. I would have thought that crab would just walk straight into my pot, but that didn't happen. And nothing as well. What have we got? Oh, the tiniest, and he is a stone crab. He's not even a mud crab. There we go. These are considered toxic in Australia. They eat them in the States, but yeah, not here. Hey, off you go, buddy. Okay, I'm gonna bet double or nothing, $40, that there are no crabs in this pot. I'd say that's a fairly safe bet at this point. Yep, absolutely clean. All right, we're gonna put these further upstream and leave them overnight. Oh, I was looking for, forward to crab for dinner. Okay, let's try this spot here. Okay, another pot here. I thought I'd try a different colour in a paddle tail, see if that gets us any. Yeah, I was so certain I'd get a mud crab in that um, that pot because I, I put it right in front of him. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, something there. <laughs> nice big snag here. Comes out a lot further than what you can see. Right there. Yeah. <sighs> Oh, got him. Oh, <laughs> mangrove jack. Oh, 
again, I was just looking away. I don't know whether it's the change in speed that's doing or, or what. Hit it like a little freight train. Let's have a look at him. Look how red he is under his stomach. Hey? He's probably, yeah, only 30 odd, 31, 32 maybe. Hey, off you go little buddy. Grow big and strong. Ooh. But yeah, he came ripping out of there. Last pot going in for the night. Try being a long cast. See a nice bunch of rocks along that edge there. There'll definitely be something in there. Let's see what we can pull out. I reckon we should get a few fish here. Yep, oh, that was a hit. Oh, there's two mangrove jack there. Two good sized mangrove jack. He's still looking, he's still looking. Oh, okay, okay. Settle down. <laughs> yeah, I can see him still swimming around afterwards looking for the lure. Yep, oh, oh yes, got him, that's him. Oh, there was three or four there. Oh, hopefully this is dinner. Oh, he's looking a little bit on the small side again. Oh, and there's another another follow there. He's getting closer though. Now that I've got him in the boat, he actually looks a little bigger than what he was. I think he's actually a little bit of a skinny fish. Let's line him up there. And here, 38 centimeters. Wow. I would not have called that for 38 centimeters. If we don't get a crab, we'll be eating you for dinner, hey? Look at that. Oh, just, yeah, I love these critters. That's the lure that caught me my dinner. A Daiwa Minnow. I think it's a four something inch. Don't think it's quite five, but anyway, let's see if we can get the other mangrove jack. That's about where they were. There's a big rock just to the right of my lure. Oh, we just got hit again. Yep, and yep, definitely got hit. Let's do that again. Yeah, they um, all seem to be sitting there. And what, what's happening here is the tide's pushing in and it's bringing all the, all the bait fish over the top of them. So the mangrove jack will just sit in that spot and let the tide do the hard work of bringing, yes, oh, the mullet, oh, I dropped him. The mullet and prawns right to them. Oh, speaking of mullet, <laughs> there's a mullet right here and tarpon rolling just behind. Thank you, mullet, right on cue. <laughs> All right, we're gonna have to strike a bit harder with these weedless plastics. You need to really drive that hook out of the plastic. Oh, and they're hitting it even before I'm moving it. Let's try a fast one across there. And that way I've got tension on the lure as they hit it. Nope, that didn't work. Okay. And we do have tarpon right here, rolling right in front of me. Yep. Oh. <laughs> I wonder if they're really small fish or brim or something. Because they keep whacking it. Keep, keep whacking it. Let's actually run it with the hook out like that and see what happens. Yep. Yeah. Oh, and again. I wonder if they're tail grabbing it or something. Look at that, every time. The cool thing is they're not shy though. Normally, a bunch of fish, like, they'd hit it two or three times and then they'd stop. Oh, I just saw a flash and he'd, he'd refused at that time. I'm like, oh, and another flash. Oh, and what is this? That's a tarpon. There was a jack flash and then another jack flash. And I've just hooked this tarpon. <laughs> oh, let's get rid of this guy. And oh, there's another tarpon following him. So many cool fish today. He's not bad. You go just under 40. These guys here are the Pacific tarpon. They're not the Atlantic tarpon. The ones in, Atlant uh, in the Atlantic Ocean grow oh, 100 pounds, 200 pounds. These are lucky if they get up to 20 pounds. Hey, off you go, buddy. Yep, he's good. Boy. That is wild. I'm gonna continue fishing with the hook exposed like that. Cause they're hitting it, they're just not getting stuck. And yeah, there's a ton of fish here. If they don't strike it in a cup, like, oh, they got him that time. That's a mangrove jack, I think, I think. I was gonna say, I have to change plastics, but I didn't have to. Oh, and another follow, something followed him up. Okay, let's have a look. I'm definitely marking this spot. <laughs> There's a mangrove jack spot. Oh yes, he's another nice fish. Yep, he would go, I, would, I reckon he would go 38. 
maybe even yeah 39 beautiful colors on him i'm gonna let him go because we have one just wanted to see if i could get a couple more fish thought i'd get a little glamour shot of the nice little mangrove jack he's definitely legal but we've got one and i like to think of the ocean as my fish keeper <laughs> So we'll let this guy go as soon as he stops biting down on this lure. We've got the hook out and we'll let him go. Bye. There he goes. I was really starting to think I wasn't going to get a fish for dinner. I was, I was surprised that, like literally that mud crab, he was 10 meters downstream from where I put the bait in that crab pot. And I have no idea why he didn't go in or what the go is with that. Um, yeah, so anyway, well fingers crossed we get a mud crab. I don't know if we'll pick him up tonight. We might we might check him tonight, um, but we'll definitely get him tomorrow morning. I like to think my exposing the hook technique worked. Let's um, yeah, see if we can get another one. There's only a small window here where the fish will be active or here or feeding uh, because as soon as the tide goes, gets too high, they'll move to a different spot because the bait fish will be too high in the water column and they won't won't be able to attack them. And that might be now. Hmm. Let's drop one down right where they were. Let it sink down a little bit. And fish it nice and slow, twitchy, twitchy. Chances are they've moved on though, after I've caught a couple of their buddies. I've just switched back to the pink jerk shad. See if that'll stir them up. Got him that time. Woohoo! Changing it up worked. What have we got? We've got a god. A little orange spot. Off you go, buddy. Ooh. Yeah, sometimes if fish see a lure a few times, they um, they won't go for it. So changing it, staying in the same spot and changing it is not a bad option. I think there's a couple of rocks here just under the water off that point, which is a perfect spot. Yep, got him. <laughs> Ooh, this is a big fish. Oh, no, this is this is a big cod. Oh, I think he's got me under. He's still there. He's definitely got me under something. It could be a mangrove jack, but the, the like how solid it was and just kept going. Yeah. Not gonna get this guy, I don't think. He's still there, you can see that rod going, tink, tink, tink. <sighs> but yeah, I don't think I'm gonna get him. And he's free. Oh, look how small he is. Oh, you know what happened? I think, oh, I don't know, that is one pregnant looking fish, but see all, how, how he's really roughed up? Either, actually no, look at his fins, he was eaten by a bigger fish, as soon as he got the lure, he was eaten by another fish, have a look at the fins, they're all tattered, he's, he's actually been inside a fish's mouth, so wow, I just, just got the, um, the anchor to see if I can get him off whatever he was on. But this poor little guy, and he's got a fish in his stomach. This is a fish eat fish world. <laughs> I'll let you go guy, hopefully you survive. You should be okay. Lost a lot of scales. Yeah, I'm gonna throw you over there so you don't get eaten by whatever's down here. <laughs> there you go, little buddy. Wow, that was incredible. So he must have got hammered by a big cod straight up. That's the lure that did it, a uh, pink and white jerk shad. I think it's around four and a half, four point two 4.2 inches, something like that. And after you've hit, I don't know, a hundred snags and scuffed your leader up on fish and had a big cod eat a little cod, it's time to put a new leader on. I like to take a few minutes out and just check out the scenery and just, just relax a little bit. You can fish too hard, and I, I have a tendency of doing that. 
you can just go all day, all day, all day, and then you're just knackered. So taking five or ten minutes to tie a new leader on and yeah, check out your surroundings is always a good thing. And always test your knots. Oh, pull them as hard as you can. There we go. Ready to fish again. The tide's ripping past all these. Let's see if we can sneaky, sneaky something out whilst we drift past quickly. So I'm here challenging fishing this. Oh, oh lucky. <laughs> Almost got jammed up in there. You've only got like a few seconds to get your cast in and hopefully hook a fish and get it out. Because you see, we're yeah, just drifting so fast. Oh, that's right in the back there. That's actually a perfect spot right there. Come on. Perfect cast right in the back. Can you get eaten or what? Huh? Nope. Oh, well. Oh, got hit halfway out by a jack. <laughs> oh, I'd totally given up on that cast. Wow. <laughs> and yeah, like I said, all I'm doing is just drifting past this and casting in wherever I can, whenever I can. Oh, he's a nice fish too. There you go, just under 40. Very nice. Yeah, he's actually probably even a little bigger, 41 maybe. Come on, fish. Okay, fish, I'm gonna let you go, hey? Eh? There you go, beautiful. Woohoo! <laughs> cool. I'm actually quite impressed with the Tierra Reel 3000 and the little little Hyper Rod 701. It's, um, yeah, it's a great little combo, nice and light. And to catch Mangrove Jack in here, it's doing all right. Half the um, battle is casting it into the, the right spot. Well, not necessarily the right spot, but far enough in so that the mangrove jack will come out for it. Yep. Mm. Got a cord. <laughs> what have we got? Black spot, I do believe. Just out of that, yeah, nice bit of timber there. He looks like he's about 31 odd, maybe 32. Oh, and look at that crab inside his mouth. Hey, there you go, very dark looking on this one. Yep, hey, off you go, buddy. Don't throw that crab up. There you go. And I do think I'm getting a better hookup rate because of how soft this plastic is. It's, um, yeah, really, really quite soft. Just heard a splash in there. Let's have a go at that. Let's try a colour I wouldn't normally try. Yeah, let's go this blue one here. I don't normally fish lures this dark. But you may as well give things a shot. So it's another jerk shad. Just put it in through the chin, out through the bottom of the lure. And then up through here. This one seems a bit shorter than the last one. There we go. Beautiful. I reckon that's UV too. Let's see what's in here. Nothing. I'm that far up the creek, the wind has almost stopped. And I've never been this far before. So this is all new to me. I'm going to fish on just a little bit longer. But it's, yeah, have a look. There's um, hoop pines, the, the big tall trees right up behind me there. Um, we've got like scrub coming right down to the water and yeah it's just just really cool i'm enjoying this <laughs> yeah oh big jack oh i dropped him oh you got another go that could have been a different one. Oh man that was a good jack okay let's go in there again Big fish. Got no chance in this current, but I have to give it a shot. Yeah, too far out that one. Let's go back in closer. Yep. 
Oh, there's a small jack. <laughs> the big one lives here and the little one lives over there. Let's see. Perfect cast, maybe. Oh, we had another go. Yep. Oh. Okay, that time I struck too early. Okay, let's get in there. Oh, perfect. That's where the small one was. Oh, and he had it. They're spitting it out so fast. Oh, he looked at it. I can see him. <laughs> He's still there. He's a good 40 plus. All right, that should get him. Oh, another hit. They are spitting it out so fast. That was, a, I think that was a different one because he didn't come from the left. Oh, oh, oh yes. <laughs> a little guy. I reckon there's probably about 10 or 15 in there. Little cutie. We'll let him go on the other side of the boat so he doesn't freak out these guys. Hey, off you go, buddy. I want to try and get one of those bigger ones. Okay, skip casting into the back. Oh, he looked at it. And another looker. Yes! Oh, get him out, get him out, get him out. <laughs> oh, I might have to up the drag on this just a little bit. I already had it fairly tight, but yeah, this is not a bad fish at all. Let's get him in and have a look. Oh, he's probably just, let's have a look. Yeah, he's probably 33, 34 centimeters. So he'd be definitely undersized. But how much fun are these guys? Hey, don't bite me little fella. Ooh. Told you not to bite me. Oh, angry snapper. <laughs> They're actually in the snapper family, but I'm talking about the chomping. Oh, off you go. <laughs> All right, straight back in. Try and get another. Imagine if you're a mullet and you accidentally swim into that corridor there. <laughs> It'd be game over pretty darn quick. Oh, it didn't come out. I, I'd expected that one to come out. Okay, let's get in there. Oh, that's way in there. That's got to get hammered. No. Oh, maybe they've stopped. That's the thing. You catch a couple of fish, and uh, yeah, mangrove jack are pretty switched on, and they'll stop feeding. Just try this side one more time. Nope, that's it. That looks like it. Oh, well, a bit of fun was had. Looks like the tide has just turned and I have to get out of here. Otherwise I can get stuck very easily. But it's cool, it's literally there, the furthest I've ever come up this system. And I just, I love exploring. Okay, let's go find camp. Thought I might check the crab pots on the way home. They probably won't have any crabs in them, but I like to have a look anyway. Oh, there's something in there. We have a cod. That's not what I wanted. He's actually a good size, but I've got one fish. I don't want a cod, so. We'll let you go, buddy, and hopefully I'll get some mud crabs. There's a few different ways I can go, but all rivers here lead to the ocean, so I'll just keep following my nose. Just going to try and find a nice, nice camping spot. Something not too close to the mangroves, where the mosquitoes or the sand flies will come and get me. Um, and some, something deep enough so I don't, I don't sit on the ground. Right here, it's actually very shallow, so I couldn't camp here at all. And there's quite a few thunder clouds around, like storm clouds, but haven't had any rain or heard any thunder. I'm actually hoping there's a bit of rain tonight to test out my new uh, tunnel tent. Let's hope we don't have another cod. 
because all they do is eat the bait. We've got nothing. Okay, I'll leave it here. Okay, let's see, pot number three. And nothing. Oh. Will it be crab or fish for dinner? I'm thinking it's going to be fish. <sighs> yep, nothing in that one too. <sighs> How's that? Despite having seen a mud crab walking like 10 metres from my, my pot, I haven't got a single crab or... I've got that stone crab, but yeah, you can't eat those. Well, fingers crossed for tomorrow morning. I just have terrible luck with crabs, I think. This is where we're staying for the night. Oh. That wind's finally starting to settle down a bit. I've just taken my shirt off and boy did I get sunburnt today. Look at that. That's just wild. Oh, I shouldn't be driving with no shirt on. I just thought I'd, I'd get, get too wet. Oh, I'm going to be hot tonight, I tell you. Anyway, I'm going to have a quick little shower. And uh, yeah, get into my evening clothes and then cook up some dinner, I think. Did I mention before, this pump actually puts out 100 PSI. But only 4 litres a minute. It's um, yeah, pretty cool. Boy, am I sunburned. Wow. As I said, I've been wanting to have a shower on boat for I don't know how many years. It is so nice. Here's our beautiful mangrove jack. Just gonna rip the fillets off it. And I'm doing a recipe that a couple of you guys have asked for. So that'll be good. And I might just use half the fish tonight. Put the other half on ice. I'll take off the skin. There we go. Beautiful. Seems I've got a problem with the stove. Oh, hopefully I can fix it on either side. That's got a little bit coming out of it, but not nearly enough to light it. Hopefully I can fix this before dark. I've got all the stuff out. I was going to make tacos, but yeah, this won't work at all. And there's no fixing this. Um, there is gas in the gas bottle. Plenty of gas. Um, but yeah, I can't fix that stove, so we we'll have to go with plan B. What a pain. Uh, let's get a carrot and cut it into slivers. Just going to cut an avocado into slices as well. I've got some sushi rice that I made at home. This is rice vinegar, sugar and salt. And I wasn't prepared for, for this. Um, what I wanted to do was crab sushi and fish tacos. So that's kind of got all messed up. But we'll make, make the best with what we've got. I'll get a little, little bit of red onion, not too much, just for something different. It's um, yeah, complete experiment this. We'll see what it tastes like. I think you can see me a little bit better on that side. And the mangrove jack that I was going to fry up, we're going to cut into nice little slivers. Just to rub more salt in my wounds, that's all the avocado I got out of that. It was brown as... Uh, I'm not having, having a lot of luck today. Let's build our sushi rolls. I reckon I'll do three of them. Maybe two fat ones. Let's do two fat ones. Whack some carrot sticks in there. 
what's left of my avocado. A big helping of fish. Oh yeah. And then to make it, oh hang on, hang on, bit of onion. I think this could actually work out all right. I think this could work. It might just taste a little, a little different to any sushi I've ever had before. And then to top it all off, a nice squeeze of quilpy. This is Japanese mayonnaise, I'm pretty sure. Hopefully I got that right. Let's see if we can roll this. Hmm. I made this a little bit too big, I think. Let's see. Yep, I've made it too big. Okay, we're gonna need the fork. Jam it in there. And the reveal. Oh, it looks like it worked. Oh, forgot the water. Oh well. <laughs> oh, terrible. Let's see if we can do a better job of the second one. Onion. Fish. And then, this is probably what I should have done before. The carrots will hold it together whilst I roll it. A little bit of water on the ends of the yucky nori. There we go. We need the quilpy. There we go. I'm rushing because it's getting dark again. If that stove had worked, I would have been eating by now. But that's not what happened. Anyway, here we go. That's better. Nice. Oh, look at that. That's worked that time. Beautiful. Let's give this a cut and see if it works. That looks good to me. Oh yes, sushi on a boat, sushi rolls, mm -mm -mm. yeah if I had caught a crab I would have just done it really basic, just a bit of carrot, crab and um, rice, maybe a bit of quilpy, yeah probably a bit of quilpy, but there we go, that's a big chunk of that in one, <laughs> what do you reckon guys? How does that look? Ooh, I think it looks pretty good. Looking good is one thing. Will it taste any good? Let's try a piece. Look at that. It actually smells like nice sushi. Give me a 20, 30 seconds and I'll describe it. I'm not sure that piece had any avocado in it. Let's try a piece with avocado. Hmm. So you only get a slight hint of the onion. You can just taste the quilpy mayo. The fish has a sort of a, yeah, it's a hard to describe that sort of texture. Nice crunch from the carrots. And that rice actually tastes really good. This is proper sushi rice this time with the um, yeah vinegar and sugar and salt. Hmm, I don't mind that. Before it gets too dark, I thought I'd try a little bit with soy. See what that's like. I think that's actually better because of the um, the salt from the soy. Mmm, definitely, yep. So, definitely not earth-shattering sashimi, sushi rolls. Um, but, yeah, totally edible. Mm, I quite like it. I don't know if you can hear them, there's some um, cicadas on the other side of the, the river there. It's actually, yeah, quite still. The clouds are still moving, but yeah, it's, it's quite a nice evening. I'm only getting the odd sand fly. No mosquitoes yet, so that's good. So yeah, quite enjoying it here. Mm. So it looks like tonight we've got like a quarter moon. It's actually pretty cool the way the, the camera picks up the light. I like it. Hmm. Very cool. There's a um, couple of birds behind me that are whoop, 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 something like that. Whoop. And there's some big bugs flying around. I don't know what they are. Anyway, um, I'm going to show you the tunnel tent tomorrow, the next episode. I'll show you a little bit tonight. Um, I've got to set it up, obviously, but I'll give you a proper run rundown in the next episode. 
but I will show you shortly. And if we look over behind us, you can see there's plenty of storm clouds there. They're quite stormy. No lightning, no thunder, which is good. Um, and yeah, the wind's actually coming that way, and my the back of my boat is facing into it. So I didn't actually bargain on that, which is interesting. Um, because the tide's yeah running out, so we'll see how that works later on. So I got the tunnel tent up. It's probably going to be very hard to see because the tent is black. So yeah, it's um yeah hard to tell where it is, I guess. Um, yeah, it's the first time I've done it at night, and it's the first time it's been really windy that I've done it. So I managed to get it up, and. I don't know, you can see my chest and shoulders. I've never been this burnt for, I think once I was this burnt. Um, yeah, I wore, it, wore no shirt for the whole day. But, yeah, this was only, I want to say two or three hours. So I do think yeah, the radiation from the sun is, is a lot worse than it used to be. Anyway, I'm going to set the rest of my bed up. Um, try and show you this in here, but that's the, the roof. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I'll show you in the morning properly. Here's something interesting. I just turn the light off, and the pink and white jerk shad is actually glowing. That's cool. <laughs> Wouldn't have expected that. That's very cool. As you can see, I've got my camp cot, inflatable pillow, and ground mat. And if I need to, I've got my sleeping bag just there. I feel really hot. I oh, yeah, yeah, got way too much sun today. And yeah, I haven't put any mosquito mesh out here. You can see the, yeah, the boat's just over there. As soon as I turn this light out, the bugs disappear, so I'm hoping that'll be good. Uh, if you don't see any more, then nothing happened tonight, and I'll see you next time. Hopefully nothing happens tonight. Um, yeah, haven't had a single drop of rain, which is odd. There's lots of big clouds flying around, but yeah, no rain. I was kind of hoping to test this tunnel tent. But yeah, I'll show it to you next episode or tomorrow morning. Then we'll check the crab pots and get some crabs, hopefully. See you then. If you're still here, I've picked out a special video just for you. Check it out.